Pat Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. And thanks for being here with us. 888-900-3393. We got a full show. There's so much going on. Got the hearings uh, going on to uh, confirm or deny Kitaji Brown Jackson, her spot on the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, Hillary Kennedy will be in today, joining us in the middle of hour two, and we'll go over all of that, the Senate hearing yesterday and the highlights and lowlights of that hearing. She'll also join us for today's Pat Gray Overtime. Oh, Hillary? So, yes. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Huh. So we got that going for us. Better sign up now at blazetv.com. Use, oh, where do I go? Uh, this is blazetv.com. You're huh. going to want to use uh, promo code More Unleashed. Get Why? Your $15 off. Wow. And I think at some point this week. That sounds unprecedented. <laughs> right. So if, huh. if yesterday wasn't enough with uh, apparently um, the folks uh, in the audience were big fans of us just kind of winging the theme song. Mm-hmm. Uh, just kind of creating our own theme song yesterday. Mm. Uh, today, Hillary Kennedy. And I think at some point this week, we're going to have to uh, give them an update on the uh, bingo squares that are covered, right? So there's a little incentive for you to sign yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometime during the week, yeah. you're going to get some inside information. Yeah. So. And, and why, why do you need to cover cool. bingo squares? So you can win. Fabulous uh, prizes selected 30, especially for you. 30 bucks at <clears throat> oh. patgrayshop. That. What is it? Patgrayshop.com? Now I can't even remember. If you say so. Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> Apparently this month it's patgrayshop.com. Cool. All right. Okay. I eat. I think we covered everything. I think so. Uh, the world continues to go to hell in a handbasket. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure we're even in a handbasket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to hell. We're just free falling. Uh, we, we've confirmed, I guess, confirmed 900 civilian deaths inside Ukraine. Oh. Uh, I would guess it's quite a bit more than that. Mm. But, I mean, they're under constant bombardment. Pretty yeah. much so. And they are holding off that one city. Will not give up, and I love it. It's great. God bless them. I mean, the the patriotism that exists in Ukraine is apparently pretty strong, pretty yeah. powerful. I think it's just the opposite in Russia right now. Yeah. Uh, so that Russian bombardment continues. I've seen some videos that, if they are what they purport to be, are shocking and i would say absolutely war crimes mm-hmm. Did you see the one of the guy with his hands up surrendering just a ukrainian citizen and the russians just shoot him down kill him right there for no apparent reason uh, they didn't know that there was a uh, a surveillance camera way off in the distance that caught the whole thing mm-hmm. so if that's going on you know where we can see it how often is it going on where we can't yeah. Then of course last week we had the we had the story of the ten people in a food line lined up for food just gunned down indiscriminately by Russian troops. Elite Russian officers want to poison Putin though and replace him, according to a Ukrainian intelligence official. Hmm. If that's true, I mean, it does tell you a lot about how the Russian people are feeling about this whole situation right now. But if he were to be replaced, do you think we'd have somebody better? I don't know. Well, you might get a withdrawal from Ukraine. Maybe. That's the case. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I just don't. I don't have a lot of confidence that the person he'd be replaced with. Uh, in fact, there was a story I saw somewhere, maybe a Drudge, about the next guy in line, and what did they call him? Brutal. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, something, something like that. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't see it immediately here, but apparently, uh, not a not a nice guy, hmm. not a polite person, <laughs> not somebody <laughs> you apparently want running your country. I would assume that if you're in Putin's inner circle, you're not a nice you're guy. You're an oligarch in Russia. You're probably not the nicest guy to begin with. Yeah, it's amazing that they've been they've been trying to track down all the oligarchs and their money and their holdings and the things that they have. You know, seven hundred million dollar yachts that uh, apparently belongs to putin he's got a palace that was how many square feet we talked about this a couple of weeks ago geez i think it was over a hundred thousand square feet it was one of the biggest maybe the biggest home in the world yeah was it a hundred and fifty thousand square feet it It was was (laughs) gigantic hang on and he's got holdings of 
you know, billions and billions of dollars. He's one of the richest people on the planet. Hmm. How'd that happen as a public servant? <laughs> That's interesting, <laughs> isn't it? That's yeah. Interesting. So you're talking about the. Um... The palace there on the Black Sea. Yes, that's the one. And I believe it was, I want to see it in the story. I saw it on the search. Um, well, the search said it was 190,000 Oh, 190,000 square feet. Yeah, I'm not seeing it in the Yeah, there yeah, it is. Yeah, you wouldn't want to cramp in yeah. his style and just give him 150,000 square feet. That'd be there wrong. There it is. That's a... 190,000. Yeah, that's a... Shoof. Oh, and then the guest house is 27,000 square feet. <laughs> the guest house! I mean, you talk about slumming it. <laughs> uh, and don't forget, he's got that underground city in Siberia that his family is purportedly hiding out in right now. So, I don't know. His actual family? Yeah, we've been through yeah, We've been through Because yeah. he's got a girlfriend, in, and he's got her holed up in, I think, was it Switzerland? Yeah. <laughs> uh, her and his love children, which... Yeah. Are several. Yeah, but I think his. Yeah, I don't know. His. I think he's got older daughters that are hanging out in Siberia at that okay. underground deal. So apparently, there's a plot to poison him and frame it as an accident. Oops. Ben- yeah. Why? Why are we talking about it then? <laughs> why is this released? Yeah, because that's just going to put Putin on higher alert right. and sit further down at the right at the really really long table instead of just the really long table. A group of in in. Influential individuals in Russia have allegedly started planning to remove him from office mm. and even lined up a successor. The effect of Western sanctions on the Russian economy is the main factor behind the scheme. Mm. Okay, it's Alexander Bortnikov, director of the FBS, which is the current version of the KGB. Yeah, so it's not going to get any better with that guy. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I guess him and Putin go way back to the KGB. Jeez. And they've had a falling out, uh, I don't know, probably over the last month or so. I he and I Bortnikov? <laughs> yeah. Have they? Mm. Something like that. That's sad. Isn't you hate it? to see a guy have, <clears throat> no friends. have uh, isolated. trouble in his friendships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he seems a little isolated. Who's around him to talk to him, to share his thoughts and feelings with? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that, that, no. that horse that he rides bareback? Yeah, maybe. Huh. The chief directorate of intelligence in Ukraine said it's known that Bortnikov... And uh, some other influential representatives of the Russian elite are considering various options to remove him from power. In particular, poisoning, sudden disease, or any other coincidence is not excluded. Uh, Our intelligence agency has apparently uh, theorized that he already has cancer of some kind. And maybe his treatments are starting to affect his mind, which is why he's doing all the stupid things he's doing. Bortnikov previously served alongside Putin in the KGB, uh, Mm -hmm. but as you said, Keith, he's recently fallen out of favor. The former intelligence agent is thought to still have a large influence, though, over insiders. A Western source said these rumors and suspicions within the Moscow inner circle will sow seeds of paranoia and doubt... In the leadership. Gonna have to sit at the longer table. Yeah. Gonna have to put another leaf in that table. Getting interesting, isn't it? It's pretty interesting. Uh, We'll see what what effect that has. I, you know, Ukraine seems to be open to talks, and and I guess they are talking. I just, I don't know if they're making any progress right now. It's really difficult to ascertain what's true and what isn't. You hear so many different things from so many different sources. Who knows what's really going on? Uh, Meanwhile, this will fix everything right here because Yuri oh. Gagarin, you know who he is, first mm-hmm. man in space, yeah. the first person ever to go into space, has had his name removed from a Space Foundation fundraiser following the invasion of Ukraine because Stupid. Gagarin was behind this thing the whole time. Yeah. whole time. He dictated the invasion. The, yeah. Uh, apparently his ghost is informing people what to do and, and forcing them to do it. It's weird. Soviet cosmonaut was the first person to fly in space April April 12th, 1961. The nonprofit organization decided to change their name of the fundraiser uh, because of current world events. This is just so stupid. You don't have to punish every person who's ever been Russian or even is currently Russian because their leader did this to Ukraine. It doesn't make any sense. And this thought police thing that they're doing where if you don't, was it uh, soccer we were talking about? 
Nah, something else. Because soccer, I think, already, they've already been. Yeah, they've already been eliminated from competition. So the ballet, I don't know. But anybody who participates in anything must first deny or denounce <laughs> oh, yeah. Vladimir Putin. Uh, was that what was that? Was a tennis tournament, right? Was it tennis? I'm yeah. Sure. Oh, right. It was Wimbledon. Wimbledon. Okay. Wimbledon won't allow Russians unless they denounce Vladimir Putin. So creepy. Well, if they if they denounce Vladimir Putin, they probably can't go home safely, at least. It's just, it's weird. It's Yeah, do you have British uh, citizenship waiting for me if I uh, yeah, do that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, U.S.-based nonprofit Space Foundation announced on its website, in light of current world events, the 2022 Space Foundation, Yuri's Night, is renamed a celebration of space. Mm. Discover what's next. <laughs> <laughs> That's catchy. It added, the focus of this fundraising event remains the same to celebrate human achievements in space while inspiring the next generation to reach for the stars. Mm. But you can't do it if you're Russian because uh, we hate all Russians now. Can't allow them to do anything anywhere at any time. Okay? All right. All right. So I'm I'm glad we got that taken care of. Man. Uh, Speaking of space, we've apparently discovered 10 more planets just since we're on this subject. Wait, Uh, what? Scientists at the, not not in this solar system, of course, mm-hmm. uh, but scientists at NASA and other institutions, they've been looking for these exoplanets, which are planets outside our solar system. And I, I don't know what happens when we find them. I guess it means that, okay, there's an alternative for us. If this, you know, the global warming situation continues and we don't get a grip on it, mm-hmm. why we can move there. It's only 28 million light years from here, which means... <laughs> Traveling at the speed of light, which we can't get anywhere near. Traveling at the speed of light, it would take you 28 million years to get there. Can we send somebody with a with an American flag to kind yeah. of plant Yeah, we there? can. We can. The only problem is... Don't hold your breath while they yeah. travel, though. By the time they get there, our flag will be much different and <laughs> yes, maybe obsolete. Sure. That is that for sure. That suck. I came all this way <laughs> for a country that no longer exists, or this flag is now expired? Yeah. <laughs> And some of these planets aren't exactly habitable anyway. Oh, get, they found a super Earth, which is called, again, very catchy, HD 108236b. Hmm. It's over three times the mass of our planet. A year on that planet is technically less than four days here because it orbits its sun so quickly. Oh, wow. That is fast. That's you are really moving. planet in a hurry. Some place <laughs> yeah, to go. Is. Can you imagine that thing traveling through? You would... If you lived there, you must be able to feel the the movement, right? At that speed, you would sure. think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, you wouldn't, uh, you might not be super comfortable because the surface temperature is estimated to be fifteen hundred degrees Fahrenheit. So, wow, yeah. that's a that's a toasty day. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit warm. Mm. Uh, but do they have tornadoes like we've been experiencing in the South? No, I don't think they do. Uh huh. See, I don't think. All right, they do. so put one in the plus column for X B nine or twelve dot H, whatever it is. Very close. Okay. HD one zero eight two three six B. Gonna have so to stupid. work on that. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Jeez. Yeah. But uh, yeah, fifteen hundred degrees. Mm-mm. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. We'll be touching down on Exoplanet HD one zero eight two three six shortly. I'd say about fifteen minutes or so. Weather on one zero eight two three six today. Clear skies, light breeze. Current temperature fourteen hundred ninety seven degrees. On our way to a high this afternoon of just over fifteen hundred. Low tonight a chilly twelve hundred seventy three degrees. Again, our on-time arrival is right around 12 minutes now, so just sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy your spontaneous combustion, <laughs> the second UD plane. We know you have a lot of choices in deep space flight, and uh, we thank you for choosing NASA. I tell you, I uh, I overdressed for, for this visit, and I always <laughs> forget did. to pack shorts. Just, just get a just yeah. t-shirt and shorts, fine for yeah. this trip, so... I... Be don't go out of your way. Yeah. Trying to, you know, match anything. Uh-huh. You don't need to. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you'll be taking it off the second you get off the plane. Uh 888-900-3393. Let me tell you about real estate agents I trust. If you're looking for a home, hopefully it's a little closer than 28 million 
light years from here. Uh, That's quite a commute if it's not. Yeah, and hopefully the weather's a little better. But uh, you need a realtor to help you find those locations. And these are the people, real estate agents I trust, are the agents who know the neighborhoods, know what you're looking for in a home, and uh, can can fill all your needs and, and desires. Put you in a good school district and, you know, near shopping and whatever else is important to you. They can also help you get your home ready to sell by giving you the great advice on what their clients are looking for in a home to buy. Real Estate Agents I Trust. This is Glenn's company, so they've all been carefully vetted by Glenn's team, and they're all fans of the show. So you've got a lot in common with them, and you know, don't have to worry about somebody who's going to piss you off the whole time when you have a discussion about anything in life. Uh, so... Real Estate Agents I Trust is a place to go. The name says it all. Realestateagentsitrust.com. At Gray Unleashed. So... The world pretty much united against Russia right now to the point where they're even doing stupid things like removing Russian names from events. You know, people who had nothing to do with this. Tchaikovsky. Mm-hmm. Yuri Gagarin. Stop. Uh, the one exception to this rule, maybe, well, there's a couple exceptions, but mainly China mm-hmm. is the big exception. They won't condemn them at all. And a, a U.S. admiral says China is fully militarized, has fully uh, militarized at least three of several islands in the South China Sea. All right. We talk about the weird situation in journalism oh, quite yeah. a bit. It's a fun headline. Oh, uh, that's a weird headline. What was it again? There are at least three of several. <laughs> I always thought several Can was Can you not three. count up the islands and say it's three of eight or <laughs> three of five? No, it's three of several islands. So... Several. I had to look <laughs> they, this up. They don't have any idea how many there are. I just thought several was always another word for three. But, okay. But the definition is more than two, but it does not a limit. You know what's the what's right. the cap when when it gets to just all yeah, right? Is it forty five? Is forty five several? <laughs> and these are these are uh, man made <laughs> islands that, that oh. China is working on here, which I don't care for. No, I don't care for that either. Because they're, they're they're militarized. They're militarized. At least three. And then now it says at least three of nearly a dozen. All right. Okay, so if it's nearly a dozen, that's more than several. That's not several. Right? Right, yeah. And why can't you say it's three of nearly, what What do you mean by near, is it 11? Give us the number at that point. Stupid. Anyway. I don't like this. Yeah. I don't I'm like this story. Man. It kind of ruins like the, the whole story. story. It's like, it whatever else I don't you're want to read it now. Yeah. Screw it. Don't. <laughs> Just don't move on. Bottom line is they're militarizing the South China Sea. And we don't like it. Yeah, and we had actually a, a pilot that was flying near there, and they told him to <laughs> turn back, and the pilot very calmly said, um, no, this is international airspace, and they didn't do anything, but we... Uh, oh, wow. It had for a moment there, I guess, it had a, a feel of uh, of uh, 1962, was it, over Ish. Cuba? Mm-hmm. 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 Well, that happened in 19... 19- 85 yeah, happened then with uh, with Maverick, if oh, you remember gosh, correctly. No, I thought you were talking about. Go ahead. <laughs> Go, keep going. What happened? Was no, there, I mean, Maverick and the, Goose were. Oh, the Goose. In, yeah, yeah. They encountered some resistance. Yeah. Some MiGs were flying around. Uh-huh. So Maverick, mm-hmm. who was one of our better pilots at the sure. time, uh, decided to fly upside down right over their, over the Russian MiG. Okay. Got up to the cockpit and flipped him off. Is while he was right? while he was flying upside down, that's how good a pilot he is. So, we've had these incidents before. Now, I don't think that was necessarily cleared by what's amazing the higher ups about that story you you tell mm-hmm. is that pilot. Little known fact went on to be a movie star. No way, really. I, I'm sure. We, huh. During the break, we can go over some of his movies. All right, but he's done a lot <laughs> since that encounter. Huh? He really parlayed. Well, good that for him. Show. Yeah. That's great. Quite a success story. Huh. Wonder why I didn't see any of it. I, you know, I didn't follow his career really after sure. that incident. Sure. I thought maybe he retired. What he did initially, I know, was go back and teach at the uh, 
at one of the academies. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh. So then he he quit that apparently and went into acting. That's weird. Weird. I didn't see that part of his career. Yeah. But speaking of all this, uh, two days ago, of course, a passenger jet, a 737, crashed in southern China. And there's some security camera footage that apparently caught the plane falling from the sky. It's Ugh. going straight down. Terrible. No survivors were found. This well, is you gotta really, look really sad. Closely. It's, it's off in the distance there. You'll just see in the middle of that screen. Uh, oh, it already happened? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see it. Okay, I didn't see it on that clip there, but I'm... I have no glasses these days. Uh, uh, I don't know. Now, I don't of course, know. you got people speaking gi- gibberish. That doesn't so help. We don't know. It does not yeah. help. I, I don't know why there's so many gibberish speakers in the on the planet, but uh, it's hard to put up with it. Because, you know, you, you <laughs> want to know what they're saying. You want right. to know what's going on, and you can't because <laughs> uh, just gibberish. I don't care for that. Speaking of people who... People who speak gibberish. Uh, Kamala Harris yesterday gave a speech, <laughs> and uh, she had some thoughts about time. The governor and I, and we were all um, doing a tour of the library here, mm-hmm. and um, talking about the significance of the passage of time. Right, the significance mm-hmm. okay. of the passage right. of time. The significance. Of so the when you think about it, mm-hmm. there is great significance to the passage of time, time. in terms mm-hmm. of what we need to do in to terms. lay these wires, what we need to do in the to passage create of time. these jobs, and there is such great significance to the passage of time <laughs> when we think about a day in the yeah. life of our children. Okay. Well, Did you get all that. If you put that into the context of uh, the significance of the passage of time then what she says mm-hmm. is uh, really profound. You or, know, in regards to, or in terms of, the uh-huh. significance of the passage of time Yeah, is what I'm trying to say. No, that's good. As you Did s- I make that clear yet? Well, as you stand here on the western flank, the northern flank, right, <laughs> to, to observe <laughs> yeah. the passage of time, <laughs> yes. you're probably <clears throat> reminded of being a little girl on a bus. Oh, man. I don't like to remember those days. Yeah. They were sad times. Sad times. Yeah, but the passage of time has put that behind you. Well, the significance of the passage of time sure. has, yeah. Yeah. In terms of the significance, if you're talking about the passage of time. You know what You know what a Kamala Harris speech is? It is, it's like all the fluff you write in a paper that you have to turn in yeah. just to fill and in the page. You have to make it 3,000 words, right. so you keep saying the same thing over and over again. In a different Just way. Just extending the words. That's exactly what she does. She, she is... wants to sound intelligent. Yeah. But she's so not intelligent that it just comes out uh, ridiculous, mm-hmm. as it just did. How many times did she say, you know, uh, this, uh, in terms of the significance of the, Let's count. In terms of the <laughs> okay. significance of the passage of time. Let's see how the many governor times. governor and I, and we were all... Um, doing a tour of the library here and um, talking about the significance of the passage of time. One. Right? The significance of the passage of time. Two. So when you think about it, yeah. there is great significance to the passage of time Three. in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And uh-huh. there is such great significance to the passage Four. of time <laughs> when we think about a day in the life of our children. That's incredible. In 34 seconds, she said it four times. In 34 seconds. She's just not an intelligent human being. She's not. She's just not. And she proves it every single day. She's just bad at this. How did this happen? Oh. How did it happen? Tune into overtime. I'm sure I'll be explaining this on a regular basis. Oh, man. I, I just, what a... Just bad at this job. Bad. Mm, just mm-hmm, bad. Mm-hmm. And just not good people. Uh, yesterday, Joe Biden let something slip in a speech that he was giving <laughs> as well. This is interesting. You know, we are at an inflection point, I believe, in the world economy. Right. Not just the world economy, in the world. It occurs every three or four generations. Uh-huh. As one of them, as the uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting the other day, right. 60. 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946. And uh, since then, we established... uh, My guess is more than 60 million people died. 
between 1900 and 1946. That's a 46-year span of time, and you're talking about the yeah. <laughs> number of people who died. I, is he talking about just in wars, though, I think, right? Is he talking about 60 million in wars? I, I, I'm Spoiler alert. Uh-huh. I'm not Googling numbers that Joe <laughs> Biden references ever. <laughs> All right, let's see the rest of this. <laughs> in 1946 and uh since then we established a liberal world order and oh. that hadn't happened in a long while a lot of people dying but nowhere near the chaos and now is a time when things are shifting we're gonna there's gonna be a new world order out there oh and we've got to lead it and we've got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it so anyway so it's a liberal wor- world order it's a new world order hmm. now i i don't know if he slipped or if they just think we're beyond the point where we can do anything about it, because mm. they've been they've been talking about the new world order quite a bit yeah, out in the open lately. That's a guy whose meds are waning yeah. at that time of day, and and you can always tell when he says something off script is when he says anyway, and then he has to get anyway, back on the script. True. And and if anyway. he thinks he's a part of any new world, new world order, order, he's crazy. He's not going to be a part of anything. He's just he's nope. The, he's the vessel of the month right now. He's the flavor of the month over four years, and he's just moving the machine forward for him. That's it. But uh, that's that's spooky. <laughs> it really I is. I don't care for it. It really is. Uh, he also had a little bit to say at the very beginning, which is really weird. Uh, the very beginning of this speech. My name's Joe Biden, and I come from Delaware, which has more corporations incorporated than all the rest of the country combined. More corporations incorporated. And I know of the business roundtable because in the days when I first... uh, So why is it that Delaware has more businesses incorporating there than every other state combined? He's proud of it. He's bragging about it. Uh, It's because of the tax situation. It's because you're not killed with taxes when you incorporate in Delaware. There's some other rules that are set up in Delaware that you don't have elsewhere that are advantageous for an LLC as well. But it's it's a lot of it. A lot of the reason is because of the tax advantages of yeah. setting up your corporation in Delaware. So why would he not, I don't know, incorporate that in his tax policy when he understands the fact that Delaware has such great success with corporations. Yeah, Hello? A, it's also they have uh, like a special court system there for businesses. Yeah, it's some of the rules and some of the other procedures too. Yeah. But they do have great tax benefits mm-hmm. for when, you set up a sh- when you set up shop in Delaware. I, I mean, use your noodle. And why don't you take that into consideration when you're talking about raising the all of the taxes and fees on corporations and you talk about them uh, like they're evil and that they need to be stopped in some way. Well, and, and I think it makes your point also with the courts too, not only through the taxes, but through the special court system in Delaware that is so business friendly, yet he is constantly bad mouthing them mm-hmm. on a national level from his bully pulpit. All the time. But let's look at how the court system is specifically set up to benefit big business in your home state. Kate, I mean, it's unbelievable. And, and it's completely lost on him. He has no awareness that it's ironic that he would brag about Delaware's situation with these corporations. And then, on the other hand, he's knifing them in the back all the time. Every chance he gets, he's talking about these big, big, evil corporations who don't pay any taxes. Ugh, it's agonizing. I, I don't... Again, how did it happen? We'll discuss in overtime. Oh, no. <laughs> Today. We will discuss. We got Hillary... Hillary Kennedy today. Yeah, she's in coming overtime. up in about an hour on the uh, on Unleashed here, and then in overtime as well. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Pat Gray Unleashed coming up with some tweets for you from Hippie Patriot. Putin is probably the most paranoid person on the planet, so you might want to keep the fact that you're going to poison him mm-hmm. under wraps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Here's yeah, your we, inside voice. We don't need right. to hear about this. Just so ridiculous. If you're going to do it, do it. Uh, magazine Overtime Watcher. <laughs> that, of course, uh, from my old program director. Dude, your program, the show needs to be more magazine 
It just needs to be more magazine-y. Uh, <laughs> so that's where that comes from. Elon Musk better get to work on a rocket that travels at 28 million light years an hour then. Well, then it'd only take an hour to get there. That'd be pretty good. That's right. yeah, take that pretty trip. convenient. Yeah. Smackwater Jack tweets: uh, American scientists can predict the surface temperature of a planet 28 million light years from Earth, but they're completely incapable of predicting what will come out of Kamala Harris's mouth next. <laughs> I mean, interesting. Yeah, they're scientists. They're not miracle workers. Come on. And let's also not forget that weathermen can't predict what's going to happen this afternoon, let alone what's going to happen on the surface of a planet. 28 million light years from here. Yep. Rowdy Introvert tweets, calling what Kamala does when she talks in front of a microphone, a speech is very, very generous, Pat. Yes, I, I suppose it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob, blah, blah. The significance of the passage of time becomes more profound when you ponder the passage of time, listening to Kamala Harris, and the significance of all the things you could have done instead. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. We also have more from uh, Joe Biden, who sat down with some children at an elementary school and uh, had some interesting (laughs) things to ask him. It Uh, was this is incredible. Joe Biden in the same room with little children should not be allowed. Is this can we broadcast this? (laughs) Don't sniff him. Don't sniff him. Honor to meet meet you. Thank you so much. You get great handshakes. I tell you. Now we're taking off our masks. Okay, now, that we're, now that we're sitting down, we're taking the mask off. I got it. You know this lady here? Yes. What's her name? Miss <laughs> Homie. <laughs> I think she, she tells me she likes you guys. Sometimes she gives us candy. Oh, you're kidding I love me. treats. It's a joy to have him back, Mr. President. It's just hands-on it? learning. Yeah, it's so it, it really does. Yeah, I can take a couple questions. What were you going to say? Oh, yeah. Did you play sports when you were younger? I did. I played basketball. Baseball and football. I also played football and I also played wrestling. You wrestling? Oh. No. Have you ever heard of a sport called rugby? Yeah, my mom plays that. Yeah. He's yeah. gonna ask you to she demonstrate, kid. <laughs> yes. Careful. How much police do you have, like, like, service to protect you? And there's a lot. They're called secret service. And so when you become president, you have a whole bunch of secret service guys. As a matter of fact, right in this room is a Secret Service guy. They know exactly how to take care of me. Yeah, they'll take what you down, like kids, if you try anything. From they'll lunch. take you down. It was, like, kind of sad. Oh, here we go. Because the first day of second grade, you, like, go and meet new people. I didn't meet new people, but huh. I couldn't make any friends. I had to stay home. I couldn't oh. really hear that much. Yeah, because they had masks and, on. And it wasn't like I was learning like I was huh. in the actual classroom. Huh. Last year, like, one of my friends on camera, mm-hmm. like, wasn't like, working, and some of them were sleeping. Okay. And then uh-huh. we came back in third grade, and so uh-huh. I got to make friends. I have, like, at least five to seven friends now. I wanted to say, um, thank you for letting us come back to school because you're yeah, he didn't. He's not the one. able to have fun with our friends and actually learn instead of being on virtual. Well, that's great. I hear you uh, all got your great. COVID shots. Is that yeah. right? I went to my yeah. church. Okay, so they, they got had, COVID like, shots too. Booster shots and stuff. So I went to go get two. Gosh. Oh, good for you. You guys are really nice to take so much time to spend with me. Pastor has to go. Okay, can we say thank you? Thank, thank you, Mr. President. President. Yeah, thanks for nothing. Thanks for wasting a whole year of our schooling, sitting home on computers with masks on our faces. In some cases, even though the lessons were being taught to us at home via computer, on the internet, and I still had my mask on. I just, I can't. He's the one responsible for all of that. And then they're thanking him for finally allowing him to come back to school and make friends and and sit there at their desk without a mask. No, they're obviously not learning any lessons about federalism. Then. Obviously not. Jeez. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's tragic. That gives you a little insight into how these kids feel. Okay. Last year sucked for them. Totally. Totally sucked. We, we, there is no way this society is not actively ruining children. Because if they're remote learning, they're not learning anything. Like she said, they're not making friends, interacting with people face-to-face. Mm-hmm. Uh, yada, yada, yada. When they come back to the school... 
We've got some footage today of what's going on when they get back to school. There is no, we are destroying children in every way imaginable. It is so tragic, so sad, and so avoidable. It's incredible that the White House is so tone deaf that they don't even, it doesn't occur to them that they're responsible for all of the kids' problems in the last year. And they're just putting that out anyway. Uh, yeah, it's just grateful to us now that they can go back to school. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, and by the way, again, it wasn't you. It, you were the cause of it. You were not the solution. And uh, the libs of TikTok, Twitter account, keep an eye on uh, the crazy <laughs> left. Uh, and as Keith mentioned, it, it, what's going on at... Uh, the el- some of these elementary schools, like Doss Elementary School in Austin, Texas. Uh, look at this memo to teachers. Uh, do we have it on the screen? Yeah, we got to get Rob to get his uh, Commodore 64 up and running. Okay, yeah. Apparently so it is running. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You read that? Well, do you not have it over there? Uh, I, oh, I do. Yeah, I do. Okay, so <clears throat> at Doss Elementary in Austin. Austin, Texas. Okay, yes, it is Texas, but it's Austin. So <laughs> it's, it's like, like the San Francisco of Texas. <laughs> yeah. So Pride Week community circles. Oh. PK through two. Mm. Okay, so pre-kindergarten through second grade. All right. Introduction. Welcome to the group. Introduce yourself as mm-hmm. the circle leader. Oh, that's cool. I want to be the circle leader. Mention the purpose of today's circle. <laughs> the purpose of this circle is to share... Uh, oh, that's good. You like to share. Right? About families. We're going to share about families. Mm-hmm. Uh, respect privacy. What? <laughs> Ooh, I like this. Okay. Okay, so anyway, they're going to bring your full attention to the person talking. Be a good listener. Talk to everyone in the circle, not just one blah, person. Blah, blah. Stay on topic, blah, blah, blah. Then you get down to respect privacy. What we say in this room stays in this room. I thought we were just talking about family. So we're going to talk about our families, but we're not going to be able to. We're not allowed to talk to our families about what we talked about regarding our families. It's fascinating that it's Pride Week, mm-hmm. and we don't want what is being said in the class repeated to their parents. Yeah. What what we say in this classroom stays in this classroom. Yep. And then of course there was another. What are you for the, talking about? For the older kids there, uh, grades three through five at Doss Elementary School, Austin, Texas. Review agreements at any time if necessary. Mm-hmm. I would just like to remind the group that we agreed to <laughs> close the circle. Oh. I want to thank everyone for participating in the circle and for sharing your thoughts and listening to each other with respect. As please, as well. please remember. Okay. That we agreed to keep what happened in this circle confidential. We got it. That is unreal. Stop with this. Wow, did they not want this getting out to the parents. What was said? Mm. Well, they might have been planning for the big pride parade there at Doss Elementary School. Because they had a big pride parade at an elementary school. This video was posted by a teacher, then summarily taken down Mm. when it got negative attention. But uh, we got really? it here. Yeah. All right, Pride Parade. Elementary school kids. Waving. Rainbow flags. Look at that, huh? Oh, the masks, too. Oh, stop. Greg Abbott needs to roll in there and oh, take control no. of this situation. Roll in there. Stop with the get masks. It. What? I didn't get that. <laughs> What's that now? What? Nothing. Oh, okay. So anyway, there you go. We got a Pride Parade for presumably... Straight kids, I have. Mm-hmm. Who knows anymore? I I, I don't know. What, they or, just they they they're they want your kids. They want to brainwash your kids. And it's a lot easier to do it in the school than on Zoom. God, just that's There's no win situation for kids these days. Homeschool. I would be so pissed if I was a parent of one of these kids and they're being told not to tell me what's going on in their class. Mm-hmm. That's despicable. And then they do the little parade there. And then the parade. And here's another cringe video. Fourth grade teacher coming out as trans to her students at a Los Angeles elementary school. Fourth grade. It's a teacher that's kind of not a guy and not a girl, like somewhere in between. Oh, so you're kind of a boy and you're kind of a girl? Kind of, yeah. Oh, yeah. you're kind of a boy. Okay, right on. Right on. 
you know what every you know you have choices in this world to be all sorts of different things mm -hmm. but that's mm. why it's mx so <laughs> mix chavez that's where that comes from i know some of you mix were a little confused chavez. some of you came yeah. and talked to me about it mm -hmm. what Jeez. <laughs> uh-oh brought up tomboy that's some people do identify that way i'm actually trans so i'm not a tomboy i'm i'm trans but mm -hmm. some people do are you i'm sure if though? they wanted to they could also go by mix in surgery? their classroom yeah huh any other questions yeah yeah why are you doing this in front of fourth graders you on a live weird. stream you look weird your looks weird you guys are both weird <laughs> do you have any other questions or can we move on yeah can we learn today woman wow or mix wow. chavez so this is what our classrooms are yeah. all about now but so i mean so it's good they're not remote learning anymore and instead they get to do this in, in person <laughs> yeah so that's really good rob makes a that's good point really good she said in the beginning of the video you get to choose who you want to be whoa whoa huh i don't think that's appropriate anymore no, no, no. I, I don't are, think we, so are we back to yes, you can choose this or no? Or just yeah, plays the beginning of this. Is it not who you are? Because that's interesting. Yeah, it's a good it's point. A teacher, that's mm -hmm. kind of not a guy and not a girl, like somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. Oh, so oh. You're like a girl? kinda, yeah, yeah. Kinda, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, right on. Right on. Dude, that's me. So, so now the kids trans too. You know too. what? Every you know you, you have know. A choices in this world to choice. be all sorts of different Thanks. things. You have your choices. That, there you go. Okay, okay so you're choosing. <laughs> Uh, to be whatever you want to be. Wow. The reaction of the kids <sighs> in a normal society would have been like, what? What? The, what, what do you, yeah, what do you mean? Kind of boy, what is that? <laughs> Instead, the majority of the class is, oh, okay, that's cool. Well, me too. I, I can't help. And the claim that she's trans, are you really though? Have you had a surgical procedure done to where you did make the transition? Because... It's not even that anymore. Mm -mm. It's just what you feel in your head at any given time. It's just how you identify. I, I, oh, this is just and, and, and I'm agonizing. Don't use my kid as an audience member for your big moment on a live stream. Teach the children. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It is over. Good night, America. Well, you know, the militant... The militant people in the movement, the LGBTQQIA2 plus movement, have had this agenda the whole time. Again, we've talked about this before. It's never been about tolerance. We've tolerated this thing fine forever. It's not about that. They don't even talk about that anymore. That's it's we're way beyond tolerance to acceptance, embracing it, and promoting it. That's what we're doing now. And the cat was let out of the bag by a very militant uh, gay person years ago when this person was talking about gay marriage. Not That's not even the goal. So naturally, Republicans blame... Although that didn't sound like that particular <laughs> activist. Wow. Omar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jumping in on the topic. Huh. That's weird. Uh -huh. uh, okay, let me see here. I... Yeah, it's ab absolutely... It. It's been the goal from the beginning. And it was yes. uh, an Obama advisor that actually pointed out the the real aim all along <clears throat> yeah i can't now all of a sudden i, I heard can't. it earlier this morning i know i played it okay. i had it specifically ready uh it's either <laughs> let's see there we go okay oh, here okay, it is cool. i um i mean i agree it's a no-brainer that uh <laughs> that we should have the right to marry okay but, but... uh i also think equally that it's a no-brainer that the institution of marriage should not exist oh so uh <laughs> that yeah yay no marriage that causes my brain some trouble, mm. uh, and um, and part of it why mm -hmm. it causes me trouble is because uh, fighting for gay marriage generally involves lying mm. about what we're going to do with marriage when we get there. Oh, you know, huh. because we lie mm -hmm. that the institution of marriage is not going to change, and that is a lie. The institution of marriage is going to change, and it should change. So that's the goal. Um, and again, <clears throat> I, I don't think mm -hmm. it should exist. Um, and. Um, mm. I don't like uh, taking part in in creating fictions about about my life. That's sort of not what I had in mind when I came out mm. 30 years ago. Mm. You know, um, mm -hmm. I have three kids who have mm. um, five parents, more mm. or less. Five. Uh, oh, all right. And I don't see why uh, they shouldn't have five parents legally. Mm -hmm. 
I don't see why we should choose two of those parents and make them into a sanctioned couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so changing the very foundation of our society. We're going to change marriage. We're going to change families. Uh, that's the goal here. And that's that's what these militants are trying to do. All the hallmarks of a stable society. Yeah. I mean, it's what civilization is based on. The nucleus of the family. And so we're just going to upend it completely. Don't worry about it. It's going to be great. And we're going to teach your children that the way that they've been taught by their parents is completely wrong. But we're not going to allow them to tell their parents exactly what we're doing. We don't want them to know anything about what we're doing. Wow, that's despicable. It should be, there should be a law. It's it's really criminal to be doing this to our children in schools behind yeah. our backs. So Unreal. To recap, your child can stay at home, do remote learning, and learn <clears throat> absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. Or they can go to school and be taught in person by someone such as that. All right. Good options, huh, America? Or how about this? Maybe you get your child out what? of that system. Spit yourself out of that system. That makes no sense. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about now. Take control of it and know for a fact what your kids are being taught. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I mean... It, <laughs> That's even up in the air as to whether or not it's the right thing. The parents should be in control of that. I mean, there are extremists now who are saying parents should have no no control over that and don't need to know what's being taught in schools. Wow. Yeah, just a little something to keep in mind <laughs> if your children are in public school right now. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Packer Unleashed coming up. Great to have you with us. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, really bad day for Apple yesterday. They had some kind of global outage for something like four hours. All their systems were down. Yeah, there's speculation. Uh, that's were all they hacked? Is. Yeah, that's just because hmm. I guess the latest intelligence is that Russia. Looking for some cyber attacks in the U.S. on companies. So, oh, you know, interesting. Yeah. So Apple Music was down. Mm. Apple Maps. A lot of the tech giants, other apps and sites. And it was apparently global. Experienced. Uh, it was experienced in both the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, they previously confirmed that it affected the App Store, <clears throat> the Apple Arcade, Apple Business Manager, Apple Music, iCloud, iTunes, Apple TV, and more. Boy, that just shows you how ubiquitous these <clears throat> companies are. Oh, man. There's a lot of different places you can get your Apple stuff. Yeah. Different arenas. And just how much we use it. Yeah. We use it in so many aspects of our lives. Uh, so people were tweeting about their experiences. And uh, expressing their frustration, one person joked, how does Apple Maps go down? That's absolutely ridiculous. Not more ridiculous than me not learning my way around town without GPS, but still ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) So true. Uh, We are so dependent, at least I am, so dependent on GPS now. You know, we moved to Houston in uh, 2001 and lived there for eight years. And I don't... GPS... I think it was available then, Mm -hmm. right? It was just nowhere near as prevalent, and I I didn't have it. So I got to know Houston really well, driving around, you know, just using my own wits and remembering where things are. Trial and error. Trial and error. And to this day, though, uh, I I can find virtually anything I need to find without using GPS in Houston. Now, we moved to the Dallas Metroplex 10 years ago. (laughs) Yeah. And I still don't have any idea how to get around in this town. Mm. Because from day one, I've relied on GPS. Yeah. And so when you rely on GPS, you don't learn. And that's a problem for kids growing up now that don't necessarily know how to read. Maps? Maps. As, oh, no. I, knew, I walked right into that one. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you got to teach kids because... I personally believe uh, right. that oh, yeah. U.S. Americans are unable uh-huh. to do so uh-huh. because sure. uh, some, some, people. some people out there people in our out nation there. don't, our nation. don't, have, don't that. have that. That's a fact. Uh, I that is true. That our ed- education, like such as in like such South, as Africa South Africa and uh, mm-hmm. the Iraq, the everywhere Iraq. like such as. Everywhere and like such as. I believe that they should... They should... Uh, 
our education over, over here, here in the U.S. should, in the US help, should the help the U.S. Or, or should help no, South Africa. South Africa. It should help and, the Iraq and, and the Asian Iraq countries. and the Asian countries. So we will be so able to build up our future. Build up our future. <laughs> yeah. Thank for, you very much. She was about to say for her children. <laughs> you know she was. You stopped it for. Uh, build up our future for. <laughs> What do you think that, because uh, so her great. name is uh, Katie Upton. She's not yeah. the Kate Upton, but she's Kate Upton. Anyway, what do you think she's pulling down a year now with those kind of skills? Wow. I, I wonder what she's up to. Yeah. So that, millions. that's exactly the issue, though, is kids don't have, have maps, maps. Right? They and don't you, have maps. And they're not learning basic skills because, <laughs> you know, the fourth graders are having their time in class spent with uh, Mix Chavez. Coming out for Mix. them on 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 mm-hmm. the live stream mm-hmm. on TikTok. Right, they don't have time to learn about maps. Nope, they're too busy learning. You know, to put the paper in this garbage can, put the cans in this garbage can, put the garbage in this can. Mm-hmm. We don't have time to teach you about maps, but at least you know how to save Mother Earth. I mean, it's just it, 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 there's no life skills anymore. No, yeah. and and we we saw last week the way they're teaching math. They don't oh, learn gosh. any memorization skills. So they don't memorize, you know, certain things mathematically like we did when we were in school. You learned how to multiply by nine and pretty much every number. Uh, and then now they don't want them to memorize anything. They want to do a five-step process in something that should take one step. Why? Why are they doing that? So, yeah, our kids are going to be at quite a disadvantage. Uh, at the end of the line here. And we did mention what you could do about that if you really wanted to, and that's get them out of the system. Get them out. By the way, get them out of the system. Um, uh, little Miss uh, Teen South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, what is she worth now? Later this month, uh-huh. she is going to be 33 <clears throat> years old. Okay. So time flies, man. It got- yeah, it does. And uh, she's worth a, a million dollars. Is her net worth? Is what they're saying. One million. One to two million. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. That's okay. I mean, I don't know what oh, she does. Oh, Do you know what she here, does? Here's one: is one to five million, uh, fashion model. Oh, okay. Map maker, cartographer, <laughs> God, like speaker, motivational speaker. Uh, all right, we got some tweets here. Jimmy Dimples tweets: <laughs> Overtime needs to be more magaziney. Magaziney sounds like something I'd pass up at a, the Italian buffet. Uh huh. Pass up? Uh, really? Yeah, more, more, magazine I want more of oh, that. Yeah, with, with some of that Alfredo sauce. Uh-huh. Maybe some of the magazine noodles. <laughs> Hideous Laugh tweets, Do you think they needed to screen the questions from the elementary school students? Notice how none of them asked Biden the hard questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sarah the Roma, Pride Week teaches telling kids they need to keep what they discuss a secret. I was under the impression any adult who asks children to keep things keep secrets from their parents mm. are predators. Uh-huh. Yes, indeed. Oh, a case can be made. Isn't that the truth? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. We're doing such a disservice to them. Such an incredible disservice. Which gives you so much hope for the future of the nation. Yes, we're in good hands. We're going to be in good hands with a bunch of people who don't know how to get around the country and uh, they don't know how to add and subtract and multiply and divide. So that's going to be really good for the economy. And... and- and then even younger still, they've uh, been raised by adults who have covered their faces for the last two years. So mm-hmm. we're raising uh, mm-hmm. unempathetic sociopaths. And they get to talk good. about how uh, their teacher is non-binary and really sort of man, but kind of woman too, and really neither. Oh. Huh. Okay. All right. That's great. We're doomed. That's great. And then they're going to have gay pride parades. Would you want your children to have a heterosexual pride parade? Not at Hey, I'm glad I have heterosexual sex. And you walk through pr- the halls of the school <laughs> proclaiming that? No. No. Why are they doing any sort of sexually related parade? We've been over At an this. elementary school. Right? Yes, we have a million times. And it pisses me off we that we got to keep doing it. Anything relating to sex in no. young children. No. What is this obsession I, both parties have, uh, in, amidst them, uh, among their ranks, mm-hmm. uh, pedophiles. Let's just be honest. I mean, they are on all levels of this society. We don't need to sexualize our children 
or make sex a part of their lives at such a young age. Nope. Let them be kids. It is absolutely horrific. Why are we doing that? And you know what? Leave their education in other matters, other than reading, writing, or arithmetic. Leave that to me. Leave that to the parent. Everything else, you can teach them at school. Teach them about history. Teach them math. Teach them science. Teach them English. But leave the rest of it alone. Like when do they have time to learn those those subjects? They don't. They don't have, and they're not. They're not learning those subjects, and that's why uh, so many of them don't have any idea what's in the Constitution. What's it? What is it? What's it about? Why should we defend it? It's a crappy document that started out flawed in the first place. That encouraged slavery, right? To them, that's what it is. That's uh, despicable what they're doing to our kids, and it's dangerous. And it's gonna, it's going to kill our society if we How don't put a stop to it. How many years left do you think we got as a nation, Pat? Uh, less than one. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you think this time next year we're in the Republic of Texas? Yeah. No, we're just in a void somewhere. It's just a. Uh... Are we? Oh, wait a minute. Okay. So, how soon until until where you live mm-hmm. and you look at a map? Mm-hmm. It's because it's a dreaded diagonal line. Because if you have a diagonal line over where you live, you're in a disputed territory. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that feels like that's our mm-hmm. future real soon. It's really all, already being disputed, frankly. Mm. Uh, something else that's being disputed is what Chris Cuomo is owed or not owed at uh, CNN. Mm. This is turning out to be a real battle mm-hmm. between CNN and Chris Cuomo, who I thought they were... I, I thought everybody loved each other at, at <laughs> CNN. But Chris Cuomo... Uh, of course, who had a history of blowing kisses toward CNN anchor Don Lemon as they <laughs> repeatedly told each other, I love you, brother. Aww. Remember that? Remember those kisses? Yeah. They were, their shows were on and they hand back to back. Hand off. And they did the handoff. Yeah. At the beginning of, I forget who was first and who was second because I never watched. <laughs> exactly. I was sitting here thinking, but, <laughs> no idea. Wait, was Lemon? First? I don't know. <laughs> But now, apparently, I don't think they love each other as brothers anymore because uh, Cuomo just turned on Lemon and Jake Tapper saying they had breached traditional journalistic standards. Mm. Cuomo also accused Tapper of falsely claiming Cuomo had threatened former CNN chief Jeff Zucker and Lemon had falsely claimed that Cuomo had been found to break with those journalistic standards and then was paid handsomely for it. Wow. Don Lemon said that about Chris Cuomo? So the demand for arbitration states, Cuomo had no reason to believe that his assistance to Governor Cuomo was inconsistent with CNN's or Turner's policies (laughs) nor its expectations. Especially given the fact that Zucker and Golist had encouraged him to do so. I bet that's true. I bet you that's true. And had themselves provided advice to Governor Cuomo. Again, I'll bet that's true. In fact, CNN fostered a culture in which the network's standards and practices were a constantly moving target, (laughs) modified at CNN executives' discretion as they saw fit. Mm -hmm. And that culture began at the top with Zucker and Golist. Yeah. As long as Zucker and Golist believed CNN's ratings would benefit, they were more than willing to disregard breaches of traditional journalistic standards by CNN personalities, such as Don Lemon and Jake Tapper, or even to engage in blatant breaches of journalistic ethics themselves. And this is despite all the bias that, that uh, breaches journalistic standards. I mean, they don't care about that. Obviously there's no better example of this than Zucker and Golis making an exception to the CNN rule to direct Cuomo to interview his brother several times over the course of three months. Oh, yeah, remember yeah. that? It was almost a wasn't it a it was nightly a, thing? It yeah, seemed it was, like it was. Yeah, it was Maybe awesome. it was just weekly. It was a joke for him because it was like, hey, remember Q tip? Remember that? They're holding up like big Q tips yeah, or something. Right. <laughs> yes. So stupid. Because it was a COVID thing. <sighs> and they were talking about the unpleasantness, I think, of jamming the Q tip up your nose. So it was really funny that they had a giant Q-tip that was supposed to go up your nose. Oh. <laughs> That's great. Uh you guys are wacky. Quality people. Before Cuomo was terminated, uh, Zucker at first claimed that he'd been unaware of Cuomo's discussions with Governor Cuomo's aides when Zucker had done the same thing himself, they say. After Cuomo's 
termination, Zucker claimed that Cuomo had broken his word and that Cuomo misrepresented the extent of his support for his brother. What a mess. Now, you know that there's all kinds of corruption at Mm. CNN. Mm -hmm. At the top, through all the anchors, none of these people care about journalistic standards. They don't give a rat's anus about that. (laughs) They couldn't care less. It's going to be fun, though, to see because uh, we... I love it when liberals eat their own, and this is a great example of just that happening. This is CNN, Uh the most trusted name in news. Yeah, maybe in 1992 that was the case. Yeah, Uh, yeah, and uh, Pat had Sarah mentions, like, who do you choose between Don Lemon and Chris Oh, I don't know. I can't stand them both so much. (laughs) I dislike both of them with all the intensity of a billion if, white hot burning if, suns. If I'm a kid in, in those divorce proceedings, I want to be a ward of the state, please. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> no. All right. Let me tell you about Rough Greens. If you're a dog owner, uh, I know it's important to you to take care of your dog in the best way possible and to give them a happy and healthy life. And that dry kibble dog food just can't do it because all of the nutrients – have been burned out of that food in the sterilization process. has to be sterilized so it lasts a really long time on the store shelves. Now, there's a supplement. It's Rough Greens. You sprinkle it on top of your dog's food, and it puts back all those nutrients. The vitamins, the minerals, probiotics, antioxidants. So it doesn't really matter what you're feeding them as far as the dog food. Just sprinkle the Rough Greens on it, and it takes care of all of that for you. Basically, all the nutrients that are missing out of your dog's food are put back into it with Rough Greens. And you'll just see a difference in the way they act after a month or two of them eating the Rough Greens, and they love it. My dog, Belle, absolutely loves the stuff. Most dogs I know love the stuff. But Rough Greens wants you to be able to make sure that your dog is going to like it too uh, before you commit to buying it. So get a free bag of Rough Greens for your dog to try out. You just have to pay the shipping. Go to roughgreens.com, R-U-F-F greens.com, or call 833-783-3364. Pat Gray. Think the Uh. lower build a road between Uh. Pete's house and Pat's house? No! Uh. Please, no! 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 No. It's Pat Gray Unleashed on Mm -hmm. the blaze. Yes. No. Wait. No. Yes. Yes. Ah. No. Hmm? No. Yes. Yes. No. (laughs) Uh, hey, the Maury Povich show, calling it quits at the end of the season. <laughs> Just breaking news, and I know what you're thinking. Yeah. Wait, Maury Povich is still on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, where's Jerry Springer then? Is he st- is he still throwing chairs somewhere at, uh, you know, lesbian nuns? Because they're pissed Wait. off that one of them got pregnant I and the that. other won't claim the baby I, I don't know i missed that episode what about merv griffin is he still on can i where can i find dick cavett dick cavett <laughs> <laughs> maury povich is still on the air i had Did no you idea know that nope. i had no idea wow that show's been going a long time long time was he the one who was married to Kenny yeah Chung? yeah uh-huh okay. well, he sure is maybe they still are i don't know uh, i think they are yeah i think they're still married yeah. Happily wow. married little couple. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, are those shows still around? Like those uh, crazy... Dick Cavett? No. No, no, no not Dick Dick's Cavett. not doing his show Got anymore. Got it. No, I'm talking about the ones <laughs> where just the uh, bring on some... And who's the father? Yeah, Come I, on out. I don't know of any, like the Jerry Springer yeah. type things and the... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I do know Hillary Kennedy's coming up in just a few minutes. She's going to talk to the Supreme Court nominee and the process that's going on right now. Yesterday was day one. Uh, and then Hillary will join us for overtime. So you can sign up for your Blaze TV subscription right now. Go to blazetv.com. You'll save $15 when you use the promo code PAT. No, more unleashed. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Uh, $15 off. When you use the promo code more unleashed, there it is right Blaze there. TV.com slash Pat. Um, mm. I will say there was some confusion yesterday. People thought maybe it was mm. live right after this show. You know, when does it drop? It's uh, typically going to drop every day at noon Eastern as a separate standalone. So you don't have to look for it at the end, like attached to the end of this show, spliced in there. It's its own it's entity. Gonna, yeah, it's its own little thing. So okay. mm-hmm. look for its own little picture on the uh pat gray page at blaze tv i'm gonna do that i'll look for it today really promise i'll do that yeah 
Yeah. You going to tweet out proof that you're uh, doing this? No. No, I'm not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Got this tweet from Scottness. Uh, I think Kate Upton could get a job as a speechwriter for Kamala Harris. <laughs> you know, I think we've actually <laughs> think so. had proof because yeah, we've heard so. uh, elements of Kate Upton, Caitlin Upton, in mm-hmm. in Kamala speeches. I can't think of oh, the one on top of it. No but, question. But I mean, about we've been it. triggered. We've gone. Wait, that sounds that's, like yes, uh, Miss Map. Caitlin South Miss South Carolina. Miss Teen South Carolina. That's what it done was. Done good teen. for herself. Yeah. That's why I say, you know, she was a teenager when we had that clip. Yeah. Now she's going to be 33 next week. It's amazing. Jeez. I, where'd the time go? The passage of time, Pat. Hey, where do you get? The we, passage <laughs> of time is just a thing. Speaking of Kamala. Passage. Yeah. We brought that full circle, didn't we? All right. Uh, speaking of dogs, which we weren't, but well, a while ago we were talking about dogs. <laughs> uh, but we've got just a few minutes here before uh, Hillary. So I want to get this out of the way so Keith will stop talking about it. Well, um, oh, yeah, this is interesting. The world's smartest dog. No, question mark. Is question this mark. the world's smartest dog? Watch mm-hmm. this video and you decide. Okay. Okay. All right. So the kids are playing with a ball. See, now watch the little dog off to the bottom right. <clears throat> oh, they the threw ball. it in the water. Okay. All right. That's okay. So girl mm-hmm. goes inside. Tell mom, hey, I'm going to go get mom. The kid's thinking, I'm going to climb in here, get this ball. The dog's like, I don't think so, boy. Must like, be a service dog, too, right? right? So watch this. The dog's like, I can get this. I can get this. Why don't you just let me? You and it pulls here. the right. kid back. Get out of there. The kid's not fighting him, right? Ah, oh, got it. Now watch the dog. What? Dog's going to go over here. He's going to grab the little <laughs> retriever pole. He's going to fish it out. He's going to fish it out. Yeah. He's got the ball. Now watch this. He brings it over to the kid, even. <laughs> right? He's like, here. That's great CGI. It's Somebody not, did a really no. good job on that. No, no, no. Mm. There you go. There's the ball. All right. Everybody happy? Ah, oh, good boy. Okay. Mm-hmm. World's smartest dog? No. You, CGI. It's not okay. I don't think it's it's not CGI. CGI. Not CGI. They did not go get a pool tool. Oh, yeah, you did. And then go back oh, I and think so. fish the ball no, out. No, I think so. No. I think so. I think what you got here, I don't know if you want to analyze this. I think you've got a well trained dog following mm-hmm. commands off camera and it ruins the whole I mean, even beauty if of. that's the case, that's not that bad. Okay, you want to see that? That's not that bad. Again or no? Are yeah. you good? Yeah, I'll see it again. All right, let's watch this again. All right, so first of all, the okay. first problem is the girl throws the ball. Watch this. What a stupid throw this is. Look, at not even close to the ball. Ah, ah. See, I mean, she obviously did that on purpose. Yeah. She was aiming uh-huh. right for it. Now then she runs this. in to yeah. get mom or whatever. The kid's going to get in there, and now, he's going to drown. Somebody so the dog yells says, to the nope, dog. nope. You see, need to back see, off. Now, see, the dog was commanded. The dog was looking off camera. Mm-hmm. Somebody told the dog. He didn't look over at the kid and do it. Now, the kid's all like, and, and by the way. Eh. Then he gets the pool. But hold uh, on. Can you pause tool. it for a second, Rom? Because the kid, when he's at the thing, he looks back at the dog like, yo, that's your cue. Where are you? And anyway, we're past that point. There's just mm-hmm. too much happening here. Mm-hmm. But the point is, I don't think mm-hmm. it's CGI at all. I mm-hmm. I do think that. It was just a staged thing and kind of ruins it. See, that Eddie, that dog, he got it. See, that's real. Yeah, I don't know. You don't think? You know, no, I don't know. You know. Maybe. So you think it negates the entire video? Yeah, I don't like video. it. I don't, don't play with my emotions. If the dog's just following commands. Yeah, I don't play with my emotions. If, if like he that. didn't do it of his own volition, mm-hmm. then it's not worth it. It's not worth it's it. It's not worth even a watch. Okay. Well, I didn't know it was worth a watch. It's worth breaking down for the audience to show that it was just a staged event. So <laughs> I hope we didn't ruin too or much. Or CGI. I don't know. You be the judge. Pat votes CGI. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter, and uh, we're gonna do overtime again today. Don't forget. So sign up because the only way you can get it is if you're a Blaze TV subscriber, uh, and you don't just get uh, overtime. You get everything that blaze tv has to offer which yeah. is awesome and uh and so today hillary kennedy mm-hmm. will be joining us looking forward to that coming um, up next and then uh tomorrow wednesday's overtime we're going to update everybody on where mm-hmm. what, what exactly their their bingo board their pat gray bingo board should look like right yes because it's uh it's getting it's, dangerously close it's man it's filling right on up and we'll tell you. Maybe we'll even tell you how many squares have been filled. Well, we tell everybody every day on Twitter how many squares oh, have been we? filled. We're going to oh, tell okay. them We're going to tell you ones. the exact squares. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that is generous of us. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Pat Gray Unleashed. Coming up. 
Gray returns. And we return with Hillary Kennedy from the Four Minute Buzz. Uh, yesterday, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson was in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and today she'll actually answer questions. They were just grandstanding and kind of introducing the fact that they're going to be grandstanding for a while. Um, but uh, the senators made their opening statements, as did she, and Ted Cruz set the stage for it. Likewise, it's not about race. We will see Democrats in the media suggest that any senator that is skeptical of your nomination, that questions you vigorously, or that dares to vote against you must somehow harbor racial animus. If that were the standard, I would note we are sitting on a committee where multiple members of this committee, the senior Democrats in the committee, happily filibustered Judge Janice Rogers Brown. A very qualified African-American woman nominated to the D.C. Circuit. And they did so precisely because they wanted to prevent Judge Brown from becoming Justice Brown, the first African-American woman. Joe Biden was among the Democrats filibustering the first African-American woman nominated to the D.C. Circuit. Thank you for mentioning that. Senior Democrats on this committee also Mm. filibustered Miguel Estrada. As the staff for Senator Ted Kennedy said in writing at the time, the Democrats filibustered Miguel Estrada, quote, because he is Hispanic. They were explicitly racial. If you dare, if you are Hispanic or African-American and you dare depart from their political orthodoxy, they will crush you, they will attack you, they will slander you, they will filibuster you. Wow. Uh, So true. And such a great point from Ted Cruz. Um, It's going to be interesting to watch these hearings Mm -hmm. because, you know, this is a black woman and I'm sure she's going to be treated completely differently than than previous minorities were treated by the Democrats. Uh, But Hillary joins us. What what were your thoughts on the uh, first day yesterday? It was kind of interesting because. By all accounts, she seems very capable. Most people said she's very nice. She's been great to work with, all of those things. But a lot of the Republicans, they know they they can't do a whole lot this time around because she's pretty much a shoe in mm. But they do want to bring up some points about her that seem concerning. And uh, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley, he brought up some instances that I think everyone yeah. should know about. So this started when she was in law school, then she spent time on the U.S. Sentencing Commission, then as a federal judge, and now, of course, she's nominated to the Supreme Court. There's nothing that he said. So the things I'm about to, the examples I'm about to read for you, they are all factually correct. You can look them up. They are verifiable. Uh, The Washington Post, however, uh, and CNN also said these were selective instances and lacking significant context, but these are truly facts. These right. are things that she has mm-hmm. done. This is part of her record. I think it's all in context if it's part of her record. I totally agree. Mm. So here we go. Uh, when she was a member of the U.S. Sentencing Commission, she advocated for drastic change in how the law treats sex offenders by eliminating the existing mandatory minimum sentences for child porn. Oh, my gosh. So then she said some people who possess child porn are either in this for the collection or the people who are loners and find status in their participation in the community. <laughs> what? Wait, they're in it for the collection? They're collectors. Right. Of, like uh. like you would with uh, baseball cards. Does that Correct. make it Our better? stamps. Well, that's and what... you're just collecting child porn. Senator Hawley said, <laughs> well, also, what kind of community <laughs> are these people right. trying to be a part of? The yeah, community of child exploiters? That just doesn't that's make creepy. any sense. That's creepy. She also uh, believes there may be a type of less serious child pornography offender whose motivation isn't sexual, but is the challenge or to use the technology, I guess, to obtain what? child pornography. Yeah. So let's I want talk all about. That doesn't even make sense. Today. I want to specific hear specific cases. Yeah. So in the case of the United States versus Hawkins, the sex offender had multiple images of child porn. He was over eighteen. The sentencing guidelines called for a mm. sentence of up to ten years. She gave him three months. That is... Wow. It gets worse. In the United States versus Sears, the sex offender distributed more than 102 child pornography videos. He also... This is the worst. He sent lewd pictures of his own 10-year-old daughter. The guidelines recommended that he be sentenced to 97 to 121 months in prison. She gave him 71 months. 
Golly. And the list goes I on. Just... There's more instances of this sort of thing. Yeah. But it is concerning mm-hmm. that she repeatedly gave sentences that were far lower than the recommended sentence for that sort of offense. But uh, the nation's uh, Ellie Mistal said Saturday on MSNBC that Holly bringing these things up is just trying to get her killed. Oh, okay. So he thinks that he's trying well, to incite yeah, violence. yeah, because she shouldn't her. be on the bench if these things are an issue. And they are. I mean, that that's problematic. It's troubling. Her only out that I see is if when these better come up, Every oh, one of these, they have to because right they now Hillary is mentioned two or three, and she's got page after page after page. But her only out, and I have no idea, is if she has light sentences for everybody, no matter what the crime. If she treats everybody with kid gloves mm-hmm. across the board that comes before her, mm-hmm. then that is really her only out, as far as I'm concerned. I think you guys have a clip too of sort of the end of her her statement yesterday and she yeah. talks about how she that she's neutral in the angle that she comes mm-hmm. from if you want to yeah, yeah here's that members of this committee if i am confirmed i commit to you that i will work productively to support and defend the constitution and this mm-hmm. grand experiment of american democracy that has endured over these past 246 years I have been a judge for nearly a decade now, and I take that responsibility and my duty to be independent very seriously. I decide cases from a neutral posture. I evaluate the facts, Mm -hmm. and I interpret and apply the law to the facts of the case before me without fear or favor, consistent with my judicial oath. No leftist does that. I don't, I don't believe her, uh, and I don't know. I, I, I should. You'd have to look at her record and see if that's true. Uh, but that'll all come out in the next couple of weeks. Well, and Ted Cruz wasn't the only one who voiced some concerns. Uh, John Cornyn also had some major concerns about her as well. Mm-hmm. Here's what Cornyn had to say: I'm a bit troubled by some of the positions you've taken and arguments that you've made, representing people who. Uh, have committed terrorist acts against the United States and other dangerous criminals. As someone who has deep respect for the adversarial system of justice, I understand the importance of zealous advocacy. But it appears that sometimes this zealous advocacy has gone beyond the pale. And in some instances, it appears that your advocacy has bled over into your decision-making process as a judge. Mm Mm-hmm. You've had some cases reversed, like all judges do, but some of them were particularly high profile when you ruled against a Republican administration. I'm eager to understand why in some instances you found that you could not decide a particular issue while in other instances you enjoined a Republican administration from implementing its policies. I'm also interested, as others have mentioned, in your opinion why pro-abortion dark money groups like Demand Justice and anti-religious liberty groups are pouring millions of dollars into a public campaign in support of your nomination. Hmm. Judge Jackson, these are some of the questions and concerns I have. Yeah, Uh, I think all Americans should have those same questions. And the abortion thing is another really important aspect of uh, this particular nominee because she's apparently pro-abortion right up until and including partial birth abortion mm-hmm. uh which is horrific horrific and i i don't know how you how you confirm a supreme court justice that is fine with a baby being murdered as it's being pulled out of the birth canal i i, I don't understand that can't begin to understand that and so we'll see uh also cory booker had some weird things to say <laughs> today to me is a day of joy i cannot tell you how happy I am. Today, we should rejoice because President Biden nominated someone that we've heard to be the 116th associate judge of the Supreme Court who is extraordinarily talented and who also happens to be a black woman. Something we've never seen before. Wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay. So we've never <laughs> seen we've never seen an extraordinarily talented black wow. woman before. before. Oh, she's the apparently. first. Hold yeah. on, Can first Robert, one. Uh, according you to Corey, play the last five <laughs> seconds of that because uh, we're not the only ones that picked up on his uh, sentence structure. Look at uh, Brown Jackson. Watch her kind of watch her yeah, reactions. Wait. Watch what? that. And who also happens to be a black <laughs> woman? Something we've never seen before. <laughs> Hold on, watch this. Watch. Oops. Watch Oopsie this. daisies. Okay. Oh, She's boy. looking down like, all right, good good job with that uh, sentence structure there. Corey. Yeah, it's reminiscent of this. I mean, you got the first yes. sort of mainstream, mainstream. African American mm -hmm. who is articulate and bright and clean and clean. Mm -hmm. Nice looking guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, that's a storybook, man. Oh. Yeah, you just don't find that. You just don't find it. All right, let me tell you about Omega XL. We have uh, 360 joints from our neck down to our uh, feet. That's 360 joints that take a beating with daily activity and, of course, aging. Uh, and we'll see you in overtime, right, Hillary? Uh, so. Hillary's scurrying out of here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Omega XL can help those joints. When we're young, our bodies produce SPMs. They're nature's way of keeping our joints healthy. But as we age, we don't produce enough of them, which is why sometimes you find yourself in pain. Omega XL can restore your SPMs and rejuvenate joints and muscles so that you can move like when you were young again. Omega XL Go to OmegaXL.com slash Pat. When you buy your first bottle, they're going to give you a second one for free. OmegaXL.com slash Pat. Or you can call 1-800-844-4888. It's Pat Gray Unleashed on the Blakes. I actually forgot uh, Hillary's got, you know, the four-minute buzz to prepare for. I thought she was going to stay till. Well, until overtime. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she'll have to come back for that because she's got something in between. I guess. Whatever. Who knew there's other things going on in this building? Whatever. When did that start? I don't know. I'm an only child, so I have huh. no idea what you're talking about. Other yeah. things happening in this building. Right? It's either us or nothing, right? That's, yes. Okay. Right? right? Okay. I mean, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So she'll be back, and we'll get more into this uh, Judge uh, Brown Jackson and... Uh, Katunji Brown, Jackson. He's got other good stuff, uh, so it's not going to be all. You Have you know. noticed that there's a hyphenated name situation in many, many, many people now? I Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, this is way more prevalent than it used to be. Yeah, I mean, I think it's... Men and women. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a growing thing for probably a couple of decades now. Yeah. And so now they're, you know... I want it to stop. Quote, coming Pick one. Page. Okay. Pick one, okay? Hmm. Uh, don't be so greedy with all the names They're, one of them's just going to waste just pick one and mm. let's uh let's run with that how do you feel about extra middle names yeah i don't like that either don't like that that's either. too many yeah like a four like glenn edward lee beck oh is like that, that? Is yeah that what it is? yeah uh-huh yeah it's too much first of all he he's hogging a bunch of ends that don't need to be there okay like the n at the end of glenn mm-hmm because only one is sufficient. It does the trick. Does it I mean, sound any different when you spell it with two N's? No, not at all. it's Glenn. You don't say Glenn. <laughs> hey, maybe we should start doing that. Maybe. So after Pat Gray unleashed every day here on the Blaze is Glenn Beck. Yes, Glenn Edward Lee Beck. Okay, let's make that a thing. All right, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Now Axios has warned its readership. <laughs> about the latest development threatening public safety and our, what they call democracy. But it is, this is not a democracy. <laughs> the rise of white nationalist Hispanics. We can't have that. That bewildering title article, titled article, uh, attempts to drum up fear about a small but increasingly visible number of far-right provocateurs with Hispanic backgrounds... <laughs> Who spread racist, anti-Semitic messages? So wait, you couldn't find enough white supremacists to do this study on. So now they have to make them Hispanic. I think that's white ex exactly what's going on. Yes, that's exactly right. Okay. Authors Russell Contreras and Astrid Galvan list a number of people of Hispanic ethnic background who attacked Americans of Black or Asian descent. Although there's no indication that white nationalism motivated 
the perpetrators. <laughs> right. Now, so Hispanics can't just have a problem with other races. They have to be tied into white nationalism? Yeah, so what was happening? I guess a bunch of crimes hmm. were happening, and they realized, oh, look, there are Hispanics that are perpetrating these crimes. How can we connect this to whitey? Oh, I know. That is unreal. That's... One of the assailants, Jose Gomez III, also stabbed a white Sam's Club employee who intervened to stop Gomez from further assaulting the Asian family. So how do you classify that? Is that white nationalism as well, stabbing the white guy? Yeah, if we're going to, if if you can trace whitey somewhere in your lineage mm-hmm. in the last 500 years, then you're a uh, Hispanic white supremacist. Now, the other assailant, Alex Michael Ramos, asked pointedly, you call me an effing white supremacist? <laughs> I'm effing Spanish. I was raised in the effing <laughs> ghetto, a-holes. <laughs> uh-huh. hey, I gotta love that. So he's not, uh, you're not gonna label no, me. No, no, you're not gonna label me a white nationalist. <laughs> I'm Hispanic. <laughs> That's great. I'm a Hispanic nationalist. <laughs> Axios acknowledges that white, non-white members of the white nationalist movement face a glass ceiling. <laughs> What yeah, I bet, I bet they do. <laughs> you want to move up in the white nationalist movement, you know, yeah. but you're Hispanic, so you're kind of stuck there with okay. a ceiling. You can only go so far. Look, man, I'm I, sorry. You're not white. I know you have dreams, and I know that you... I know you, you dream about being in right. the leadership of the white you nationalist You want to climb movement. the white supremacist ladder, Yeah, but you got a couple of things working against you. Like one is <laughs> you're not white. <laughs> We don't uh, we don't like non-white people. I will, so. I will prove myself. <laughs> <laughs> what in the what? There are so many they they try so hard to make Whitey the bad guy. Right. In every last thing. That they don't even care if it makes sense we are, anymore. They don't care. We are just every front, every front of the society destroying it from within. <laughs> According to the website, there are limits to how accepted some far-right Latino activists can become in white supremacist and neo-Nazi circles. Well, yeah, I'm guessing I'm guessing that's probably true. The article met with instant derision online. Some commentators called its premise amazing or hilarious. Conservative writer <laughs> Ryan James Gerdusky tweeted, Damn, even white nationalists have diversity outreach. <laughs> <It's> awesome. <laughs> What an awesome response to that. <laughs> Even white nationalists are reaching out for the sake of diversity. I think that's great. <laughs> Others related the sudden attempt to reposition Hispanics as incipient neo-Nazis on polls mm-hmm. that show portions of the Latino electorate inching toward the Republican Party. There's the other problem, is that a lot of Hispanics are becoming disillusioned with the Democrats because they understand. Right. They're not for us. They're not helping us. They don't care about us. And uh, we don't share the values, by the way. You know, a lot of Hispanics are coming from Mexico and Central and South America, and a lot of them are Catholic. So a lot of them are pro-life, for one thing. They're pro-life, and they can't find that position Anywhere in the Democrat Party. Mm-hmm. Plus, a lot of them are freeing really bad socialism or Marxism, communism, and they see those same those same traits in the Democrat Party. So lo and behold, um, a lot of Hispanics are starting to change their mind and come around to the Republican Party where they belong. So it'll make you uh, want to pay close attention to the Democrat Party and how they treat Hispanics going forward. Yeah. Are they going to try to right. further embrace them, or are they going to continue to, to like this? Right now, this story seems far out there. Does. But will this become more of a mainstream talking point from Democrats if they feel that they are losing the Hispanic voting base? Very possibly, and, yeah. And lump them in with Whitey. And for blacks, I think a lot of blacks are also making that same realization. Um, because while the Democrat Party claims to be all about minorities and all about the black plight, they're not. They couldn't care less about minorities' situations and their plight. So I've got a, a 
a pop quiz here for you that I hadn't planned on doing here, but but when you're talking about uh, we're talking about the different races in this nation, what percentage of this nation do you, Pat Gray, think are black? Twelve percent, thirteen percent. Twelve percent. Very mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a recent poll that asked Americans that, and the average uh, guess was forty-one percent. They, they thought it was 41% so black? So the average American thinks that 41% of America's population is black. <laughs> wow. And I think that perception wow. is just from how everything is <sighs> is is geared toward race in this country. Every conversation yeah. has to go back to race. Oh, my gosh. And it's mm-hmm. to the point where you think it's just it, everything's so overwhelming that the public now has this perception that, my gosh, uh, the numbers, I don't understand. What, what This makes no sense. And it's overrepresented. They can, they can scream that it's underrepresented everywhere. But my gosh, it's actually overrepresented on all sorts of forms of medium. And right. I don't care if a character or a guy on a commercial is black. That yeah, is I not, don't either. Who cares? Don't care. But the, it's just amazing the perception of where we are on race now in this country. It's just the fact that they're trying to jam all of this stuff, all of this wokeness into every commercial and every show that comes on now. Right. Uh, it's You would think that three quarters of this country are gay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we talked about Star Trek Discovery, which has just been, I mean, that's... They've gone so far overboard that it just makes it ridiculous. You would think 90% of people are gay or trans based on watching that show. Well, we want to be fairly represented. Oh, it goes so far beyond fairly represented. It's it's laughable. Uh, but, you know, I think it's just going to get worse as time goes on. Mm-hmm. I, I really, because you can't. You can't feature white people on shows anymore. <laughs> white movies, uh, white people in movies, white people in TV shows, uh, they're they're under they're under fire. Yeah. And so if you hire one to do a show about a white person, you're a racist. Yeah, and that's just it. We don't care what the race of people are. I don't care. Just make it a good show. Right, just make it a good show, which, by the way, the Black Wonder Years thing, I'm liking that on Disney+. Plus. Is it good? Yeah, I've only seen a couple episodes, but so far it's really good. But who cares, right? Mm-hmm. It's just well done. Right. But but don't you can't have it both ways. You can't say that the white people in this country are so oppressive and holding down all the minorities, but then at the same time, you're completely underrepresenting the yeah. white person in all of your sitcoms and exactly. your commercials and all the other good stuff. Which is it, right. man? Right. Ugh. It's why they bent over backwards so far. And just about every commercial now, when they're showing a collage of people, it always includes a gay couple. Oh, almost yeah. always. Oh. Uh, And interracial couples. Mm -hmm. Like, you never have a white person, uh, a white husband with a white wife. It's always uh, an Asian with a black person, or black and white, or it's... Everything has to be... And that's fine, but it's... These companies are so I thought we were trying to represent the percentage of the country, and that's not. They're they're afraid (laughs) that that they're... Oh my gosh, a white couple? Yep. You must hate everybody else then. Can't have it. Shut up. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Plus, don't forget... Overtime, coming up with Hillary. Pat Gray, only on the Blaze Radio Network.